Hi, I'm Pat Norsha with Ram Clutches, and today we're here to talk about the Ram Single Disc Centered Iron Assembly with a Billet Aluminum Pressure Ring. This unit is ideally suited for cars in the 600 to 1200 horsepower range that may be small block or big block equipped that race in gasser type classes or gear jammer type classes that typically do not have access to an onboard data recorder. All right, when you go to install the single disc assembly, you're going to remove the 12 point nuts that hold the cover in place. Then we can slide the cover assembly off of the studs. And inside here we've got a 5135 centered iron clutch disc. It's a high coefficient of friction. It's got a lot of holding power and it's got a very good engagement properties. So it works well in the single disc applications. Underneath that we've got an aluminum flywheel with a quarter inch steel heat shield to dissipate the heat and to make a good mating surface for the clutch disc. And then we've got six individual studs in the flywheel which hold our little wear shims which we'll go over in a few minutes. We use that to adjust the ring height. So when you're assembling this unit, the first thing you're going to do is take the flywheel you're going to install it on the engine. You're going to want to use a high quality flywheel bolt like this ARP flywheel bolt with red Loctite and you'll put the bolts in, you'll pull the, the flywheel up on the crank in a star pattern, torquing it down to 85 foot-pounds. Once the flywheel is mounted in place, the clutch disc can be put on the alignment shaft. Once the clutch disc is in place, we're ready to slide the cover on over the studs. And then we're going to install the 6 3 8 24 12 point nuts. As you tighten the cover down, again, you're going to want to go in a star pattern just like you did on the flywheel, crisscrossing the cover to pull it down evenly. And you're going to torque the, each nut to 35 foot-pounds. Once the cover is tightened down, we're now ready to make some adjustments before we install the transmission and bell housing. All right, there are several adjustments we can make to our single disc center iron assembly. The first one is what we call the ring height, and that is the dimension from the top of the cover to the top of the pressure ring. And that is measured with a dial caliper. You'll measure down through this hole, down to the pressure ring. That dimension is set to 1950 when the unit is in its new position. As the clutches run, that number is going to increase to 1960, 1970 as the clutch disc wears and the mating surface wears a little bit. To adjust for that, we'll use the wear shims underneath the hat when you're servicing the clutch to bring that ring height back down to 1950. By returning the cover assembly back to that original height of 1950, you're maintaining the spring pressure and the lever angle or position so the clutch will respond and react to your adjustments. From there, the next adjustment we're going to look at is the base pressure, and that's going to be the six individual screws here that have a little Allen adjuster on top of it. The base pressure is, is calculated by measuring the installed height of each spring and then adding it together. This unit here has a 360 pound base pressure that it comes at a minimum. To adjust it, we're going to take a look at this little aluminum bushing that has a so socket flathead cap screw. And as you unscrew that cap screw, it compresses the spring down which is going to increase that seat pressure of the spring. Now in making that adjustment, you put your Allen wrench in place, turn it till you feel a little bit of tension on the cover, and then you can start to count the turns one, two, etc., to your desired pressure. Now oftentimes, a lot of people are not sure how many turns of spring pressure are in the clutch. The best thing to do if you're unsure is to put the Allen key in place, slowly turn the screw clockwise, until you feel the adjuster break away from the cover. You also want to be careful that the adjuster will adjust to about seven turns of pressure, but if you do not go beyond five, that'll keep you from unscrewing the adjuster from itself. The next adjustment we're going to look at is the counterweight. Counterweight is generated through a series of quarter 20 nuts and bolts, steel and aluminum, and these bolts are going to go into the holes at the end of each individual lever. By screwing the counterweight into the lever, you're increasing that bob weight on the end of the lever. So as the engine RPM increases, the force is generated down through the plate is going to increase as well. The last adjustment we're going to talk about is not directly related to the clutch, but is done through the clutch and the weight of the clutch, and that's the starting line RPM. By, using the, by altering the starting line RPM, you can induce traction or take traction away. Um, as the track temperature cools off, you'll want to elevate your starting line RPM to induce a little bit of tire spin to get the car moving. Or as that track temperature warms up in the middle of the day, you'll want to drop that temperature, drop that RPM down to compensate for the decreased traction available. 
Now that we've gone over those basic adjustments, we're going to get back to putting the transmission and bell housing in place. And as we do that, one thing you're going to want to pay close attention to is your throwout bearing clearance. Now, the throwout bearing is what pushes the clutch levers in to disengage it. And when the clutch pedal is all the way out, you're going to want to have a quarter inch of clearance between the bearing and the tips of the clutch fingers. Now, there's several different ways to measure that. Um, but one of the easiest ways is simply to put the transmission in place without the fork and to look in through the fork hole and move the bearing back and forth till you have that much clearance. Another way you can do that is actually to use a setup worksheet available on our website at ramclutches.com. You can actually go and measure the height of the clutch and the bearing position in the bell housing and then back into that number as well. Before we wrap things up, we're going to take a little closer look at this aluminum billet pressure ring, which is really the heart of the unit. This pressure ring is machined from 7075 Bill Aluminum, and it has six individual steel segments on the face of it that are attached with 12-point cap screws through the front and then surface ground to make your mating surface. The individual segments perform much better than a full circular ring as the aluminum and steel expand and contract at, diff contract at different rates. And using the segmented design allows that pressure ring to move around a little bit without trying to warp or distort that surface. On the top of the pressure ring, you'll see that we have the clutch levers, which are CNC machined from billet material as well. Then on top of the pressure ring, you can see we have nine spring locations that we utilize for various combinations, depending on what size engine is in the car, what the torque capacities are, and what the requirements are to hold that engine in combination. And closing the RAM single disc centered iron assembly with the aluminum billet pressure ring is an excellent choice for cars in the 600 to 1200 horsepower range. And if you need more information, you may check us out at ramclutches.com.